Well, because we're not all soft snowflakes, they probably won't be. We probably wear that, quite frankly, Benny, as a badge of honor to be called uh, anything these days by anybody on the left. But this is what they do. They, they call us names. They try and demean us, Walmart people, whatever you want to call us. And they, they you know, use the whole group of names against Trump supporters and Republicans at this point. Um, but I think it says more about them than it does about us. It shows, you know, that there is no low, too low for folks on the left, that they're, you know, whenever you don't have things going your way and you don't have any really great policy achievements or anything to tout, you just call us names. So I think we're kind of used to it, sadly, uh, as Trump supporters and, again, as Republicans. Um, but it, should, it shouldn't surprise anybody to hear this from folks on the left. Yeah, it seems like you hit the nail on the head there. They really have nothing to talk about as far as accomplishments. In fact, yeah. you've seen America first become America last in a matter of a couple of weeks. What has been the most shocking and concerning thing that you've seen out of the Biden administration? I mean, I, I think there's so much. There's so much to talk about. But I think the thing that I found most concerning is really the speed with which so much has happened. You saw on day one of a Biden administration that the executive order signed by Joe Biden, again, first day in office when he first sat down at his desk, was to stop uh, the XL Keystone pipeline and get, got rid of 11,000 energy jobs with the one signature very, very quickly. And that has started to have a big impact. We have seen now uh, that under a Biden administration, it is what you're saying, it's America last. Under Donald Trump, we were a net energy exporter as America for the first time ever in our history. We were not reliant on the Middle East. We were not reliant on Russia for any of our energy. We made it all right here at home. And that gave us a really strong standing around the world, that from a national security standpoint and so much more. That was really important. And now you see how quickly that has changed. You see how quickly things have changed at our border, that there were caravans of people waiting for Joe Biden to take office because they knew they could just flow into our country you know, unchecked. Now we're hearing that all of these folks that are coming in at our southern border, so many of them have tested positive for COVID-19. And those are the ones, Benny, that are actually being tested. You, you put on top of that the fact that Joe Biden supports a bill that would give amnesty to 11 million illegal immigrants, people that are illegally here in America. And by the way, the 11 million number is very old. It's probably closer to 20 million at this point. Also supporting, uh, the White House right now is also supporting a bill that every Democrat in Congress and the House has signed on to that would change the way we conduct our elections and make transparency virtually gone. If you were worried about the past election on November 3rd of 2020, they want to make it even more confusing. They want more room for fraud. They want to, to change things so that there's no voter ID, more early voting, more mail-in voting. Those things I found very concerning. But again, I think for me, the most shocking part is how quickly it has all happened. And this is, you know, we're talking about the first 40 days uh, of a Biden administration. It's really scary stuff. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned H.R. 1, which is a egregious insult to any red-blooded American. It is a disastrous piece of legislation. Another disastrous peach, piece of le it's a peach, really, uh, of legislation, uh, quite a peach here, is uh, the Equality Act or the Inequality Act. Now, I wanted to focus on a specific part of the Equality Act that had to do with women's sports or the lack thereof. Now, I believe we've been able to see in your Instagram some incredible athletic ability. Now, I don't know if we have that footage right now or if we can play <laughs> oh, <no>. that, <laughs> but there is some incredible athletic ability here with Laura Trump. Laura Trump is an athlete, people, okay? If you want to see more, you got to follow her on Instagram. If you look at this, I couldn't do this. Oh, no. I wouldn't be able to, I could barely get up the elevator. I could barely use the elevator today. This is incredible. I had to climb a stair out, uh, like into my hotel room. I couldn't do that. Oh, my God. I couldn't lift the Panera bread that I ate for lunch. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Laura, talk to me about women's athletics and what this bill would do. You clearly are someone who cares about being an athlete yourself. What would this yeah. bill do to the world of female athletics? Well, first of all, let me say, you're welcome in the gym with me anytime, Billy. <laughs> the, uh, open invitation goes to you from me, so come on down. <laughs> I would love to have you. We'll get you up a couple of stairs next time. 
but but really, look, I've been an athlete my whole life. I've played I played sports my entire life from as far back as I can remember, and it was so influential on the person that I am today. I fully intend on having both of my children. I, I do have a daughter in sports. I think that it's so impactful and so good for kids in so many different ways, gives opportunities that you otherwise would never have. But the problem with this bill is that it it's allowing for biological males to compete in women's sports. And whenever you look at the implications of that, for young women, especially in high school, who are competing, mm -hmm. you know, maybe to, to win a track scholarship or, you know, possibly, you know, a, a soccer scholarship, basketball, whatever it might be, it could possibly change the trajectory of their lives. Because when you are competing against a biological male, we are not built the same. It pains me to say that as a woman, but we do not have the same muscle mass. We do not biologically have the same things going on. It is much harder as a woman to compete against a man. So you're gonna have women all across America, young women who are going to miss out on scholarships, whose mm -hmm. lives are gonna turn out much differently because of this bill. And by the way, for a party that tries to champion themselves as the party of women, shame on them. Mm -hmm. This bill is an absolute disgrace. I hope my daughter never has to deal with this. I hope this is long gone, but the implications of this could have a ripple effect for a very long time in America. Kudos to uh, you know all the Democrats for trying to dismantle women's sports to take scholarships away from young women and really equality I don't think so. It should be called inequality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the easiest way to prove that men and women are not equal in sports would be for me to join you in one of those gym sessions to show exactly <laughs> how clownish I would look in relation to you. I, as a father, as a father of a young, uh, as a father of a young girl, she's six months old. I want her to be able to compete. I want her. I want yeah. female sports to survive and to thrive, and I want those to be available for my daughter and for your daughter into the future. It is egregious, monstrous, and ghoulish what the Democrats are doing right now. And you're right, it's, yep. a, it's an embarrassment to call themselves the party of women, especially on, uh, it's Women's History Month this month, right? It is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, I may take you up on that. I may take you up on that. Nurse Kate probably would be more appropriate in the gym. Maybe that would be an e more equal we comparison. We can do a whole segment on <laughs> us working out together. Maybe next week we'll see. I'm here. Let me know. Let us know in the comments. All right.